Are we really the rulers of the planet? It depends on how you look at it. But the most prolific members of the animal kingdom are insects. The number of insect species identified to date is around 1 million, dwarfing the 60,000 vertebrate species. And the total number of insects is estimated to be around 1 quintillion, which comes to about 125 million bugs per human being. It's no exaggeration to say that insects are the most dominant species on our planet, as they comprise up to 70% of the animal kingdom's species. How did these tiny, seemingly insignificant creatures come to thrive on Earth? Let's take a look at how the insects did it. Entomologists point to smallness as one of the reasons insects thrive. Being small gives them a wider range of habitats and allows them to occupy tiny ecological niches. For example, even on a single plant, they can live on the leaves, flowers, roots, and so on. They can also share habitats, like acorn goosebugs, who lay their eggs in acorns, and the goosebug larvae who live inside these tiny berries for a period of time. Not only that, but their small size also allows them to expand into new environments, with methods like parasitism. Examples include pouch lice, which can live in the throat pouches of pelicans, and mammalian lice, which can live in the fur and nostrils of mammals. There are also parasitic bees less than half a millimeter long. Similar to a paramecium or amoeba, they lay their eggs inside the eggs of other insects. In this way, insects have to take full advantage of their tiny size to expand their ecological footprint and gradually take over the planet. But here's a question for you. Why are insects so small? Why aren't there dinosaur-sized rhinoceros beetles? or dragonflies the size of pterodactyls. In short, it's because of the way they breathe and their skeletal structure. When the anthropods first came onto land during the Silurian period, 444 million years ago, they evolved a tracheal respiratory system, which insects, being part of the anthropod family, inherited. In tracheal breathing, oxygen molecules enter the insect through a series of openings called spiracles and then diffuse through cells along the system's thick trachea and thin bronchioles. Because of how this works, this type of breathing is dependent on oxygen concentration in the environment. Oxygen must be delivered to every corner of the body to actively metabolize and maintain a body of any size. But as the body grows larger, the surface area to volume ratio decreases, making it difficult for oxygen to be delivered sufficiently through diffusion. Giant dragonflies didn't emerge until the Carboniferous period, when oxygen concentrations were at their highest. This is a good example of how insect sizes are determined by oxygen concentrations in the atmosphere and, by extension, their respiratory system. Another reason insects are small is because they have exoskeletons. There are two main skeletal structures in the animal kingdom, exoskeletons and endoskeletons. The endoskeletons allow bodies to be constructed around bones, while exoskeletons contain cells and tissues inside a hard exterior. Entomologist Scott R. Shaw theorized that insects' exoskeletons evolved as a means to utilize the toxic waste excreted from their bodies. In human terms, it would be like your sweat hardening and building up, bit by bit, to become your skeleton. Anyway, these kinds of exoskeletons act as a defense in and of themselves, unlike our fragile skin. It protects the insects from UV rays and reduces water loss. It also allows them to create denser muscles than their endoskeleton counterparts, giving them great strength for their size. This is why insects are so strong despite being so tiny. Of course, one of the downsides of having an exoskeleton surrounding your body is that it can dull your senses. So, anthropods often compensated by developing sensory hairs. Exoskeletons can also restrict growth, which turns out to be a blessing in disguise. As a body grows larger, the ratio of cross-sectional muscle mass to volume decreases, making it harder for muscles to work efficiently. So insects articulated, jointed legs have a really hard time supporting larger bodies. 
Ergo, they are forced to stay small. Additionally, exoskeleton anthropods are forced to grow by molting, a process that leaves them vulnerable to predators. So, frequent molting to grow larger likely isn't the best path toward survival. These exoskeleton characteristics limit the growth of insects, allowing them to stay small and eventually take over the planet. The second reason insects have flourished is thanks to metamorphosis. Insect larvae look very different from their adult counterparts. This was, without a doubt, an amazing innovation, comparable to the rise of smartphones. This is because adults and larvae within the same species don't have to compete for food. Butterflies, for example, feed on leaves as caterpillars, but as adults, seek out nectar from flowers and then mate with other adults to continue their life cycle. Insect larvae are generally focused more on feeding and growth, while adults typically concentrate on courtship, mating, and egg-laying. Notably, metamorphosis is a physiological adaptation that evolved around the Permian period, and the fact that more than three-quarters of insects metamorphize today suggests that metamorphosis offers many advantages to insects. The previously unheard of metamorphosis strategy may practically have been a godsend for the insects on Earth, where competition over limited resources is the norm. The final ace in the hole for insect prosperity we'll be looking at today is wings. Insects were the first creatures on Earth to have wings. These first appeared during the Carboniferous period, a whopping 354 million years ago. Many insects took to the skies for the first time, including the netted-winged Paleodictotera dragonflies and the dragonfly-like mayfly ancestor Protodonata. Until the arrival of pterosaurs 150 million years ago, insects were the only animals that could take to the skies. This freed them from the clutches of their natural enemies and gave them the advantage of easy migration to different regions. Pterosaurs, birds, bats, and others appeared much later. But by then, insects had already taken over much of the planet. But how did insects first evolve their wings? Some scientists argue that insect wings originated from gills, based on the fact that the larvae of primitive dragonflies had gills. Others argue that wings originated from tiny bumps on insectoid thoracic plates, which evolved into wings during the Carboniferous period, when plant life was incredibly tall. Using their bumps, insects could glide down from plants, eventually developing the ability to fly. But there's no consensus. But back to the point, insect wings weren't just an advantage for habitat expansion. As ectotherms, insects can use their wings as tiny solar panels to increase their body temperature. Not only that, but colors and patterns on their wings could play important roles in courtship and mating, and they can even rub their wings to make sounds. Some insects protect themselves by spreading their wings widely or by using cautionary colors. Some primitive insects, like dragonflies, have pores on their wings to help them breathe. At this point, don't you think insect wings are a bit overpowered? So, the rationale behind why insects have been able to thrive on Earth boils down to three main reasons. They're tiny in size, can metamorphosize, and have wings. In fact, insects have a whole host of other strategies and weapons at their disposal, and while you're watching this video, are using them to quietly thrive beneath your toes and in every corner of your home. Do you still think insects, who were the first to have wings and brought about a metamorphosis revolution, are insignificant bugs? Science is a window to the world, and this has been Science Dream. Thank you for watching.